five, four, three, two, one. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. All right, thank you for tuning in again to Truth Music Radio. You're listening to the voice of Jeremiah, the host of Profiler. We have a quite exciting interview this evening. We'll be speaking to a man that have been there, done that, seen it. He, he's, he has a story of inspiration, positivity, especially where the youth of today are concerned. Join me in this conversation. You won't want to miss this one. All right, so again this evening, our guest is the well-known Seros. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so Ross, how are you doing, sir? Yes, um, blessings. Uh, peace, peace and love. love. <laughs> did, I, did I get your pronunciation correct? Soros. Soros, my correction, yeah, Soros. Yeah, but depending on, you know, where you're from and the accent, like in Jamaica, they would say Soros. Right. You know? So, um, yeah, man. Because but, in, yeah. In, in Jamaica, um, listeners, we, we pronounce everything... Um, you know, differently, or, or, as they say in Jamaica, bad. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, so we won't attack. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, as the journey um, that you, you know, that you've been on is quite, uh, you know, it's a broad journey, and we will, I hope that we'll have the time to go into your life, basically. But I really want to start with your upbringing. Where were you born, Siras? Because I understand that you're of Jamaican heritage. I can hear the accent and so forth, but were you born in the UK? Yeah, I was born in the UK. So I was born in London, mm -hmm. um, but I've, I've been going back and forth to Jamaica right. um, from since I was a baby. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and I've I've lived in Jamaica, so um, mm. so yeah. So we're we're in London. I, I want the listeners to get a feel um, for you, um, Sir Ross. We're in London. We're in we're in the UK. Where you born? Yeah. So Brixton, South London. Okay. Um, is where I hail from, mm -hmm. and um, you know, if any, you know anything about um British history, yes. um, Brixton is a place where during the the Windrush era, mm -hmm. um, when when Caribbeans was invited over to the UK to help rebuild the UK after the Second World War. Yes. Um, and Brixton was one of the places where a lot of the Caribbean community mm. all kind of flocked to, which is probably why Brixton Market is so famous and, you know, certain places in Brixton is so famous and so um, related with African Caribbean culture. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you were born in in Brixton. Um, what was Brixton like back in them days? Because now, when you pass through Brixton, it's it's not the Brixton of of the old. It, it's um, it's skyscrapers going up now. Uh, the, the, nothing looks quite the same. What was it like in your day? Really different. Mm. So boy, back in the day, Brixton, you know, it was a it was a ghetto still. Um, in in UK terms of the word right. um you know there was a lot of riots a lot of drug dealing a lot of it was a it was a notorious place it was known as a notorious place mm -hmm. um you know back in the day when you say you're from brixton people say oh you're from brixton like, <laughs> like, you know what i mean so um yeah it was like brixton frontline for instance uh -huh. a place well known probably throughout the whole of the UK where you could go and score any kind of drugs any right. time of the day, any time of the night. Mm -hmm. You know, four o'clock in the morning, wherever you want, you can go on Brixton Frontline, you can find it. Um, you know, racial tensions with the police, mm -hmm. which hasn't changed, as we know, to what's going on today. But um, back then, there was a lot of, you know, police just rolling up on man and beating up black, black boys on the streets. Um, you know, you'd have to run from the police. Even if you're not doing nothing, you'd have to run, mm. um, you know, stuff like that. Right. So seeing all of this, the, you know, the mistreatment of the police and, and so forth, what, what, how did that impact you as a young man growing up in Brixton? Hmm. Well, where the police are concerned, you know, um, 
I mean, I think it's well known within within our culture. Right. Um, we don't really get along with the police. The police um, is not really, you know, if one of your family members says they want to join the police force, it's, it's not a big celebration and it's not, oh, well done, yeah, great. Right. You know, um, our relationship with the police is not is not a good one um, as far as, you know, growing up uh-huh. and the things we've seen um, and, and the way we've been treated. So, um Oh, yeah, bro. But obviously, um, listening audience, Thrust's music, which um, you know you will you you will have a chance to hear as we go on, is his music is hard hitting, especially the change in his lyrical contents. Now, as they say that you know he's born again. You understand? And we'll get a chance to explore the truth. But obviously, growing up in Brixton with um, you know what was going on in, in those days that would have given you the, the foundation, that would have given you the, the righteous rebellion, if you will, that would drive and motivate you, the lyrics when I listen to your music today? Most definitely, man. Not like The police beat up my older brother oh. many times. Mm. You know what I mean? The police, like, I'll give thanks. I've never been beat up by the police, but constantly harassed by the police growing up as a teenager. Seeing other things, you know, growing up, I was... I was you know, not supposed to be, but I was taking part in in, in protests that turned into riots. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying, bro? Uh-huh. Like in the in the in the early nineties, um or mid nineties I should say. Right. You know, and those things was going on because the police was killing people in, in black people in custody. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know? Um and as a teenager um, I grew up and I was in all of that stuff and like I was about I don't know, I think I was fifteen, the first protest slash riot that I experienced oh. and I knew what was going on and I knew why I was out there and all that anger and that, that you're talking about um you know you're just out there but then there's a sense of unity mm-hmm. amongst the people right um and then it turns into you against the police uh-huh. like the people against the police hours of the morning and you're out there there's things on fire <laughs> and it's black it's white it's all of us because mm. at the end of the day Within within the poorer parts or ghettos, if you want to say, of the UK, mm. there's still white people, and and the white people and the black people in you know the working class, if you want to call it, like we get on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So when there's something going on, if it's an injustice against the black community, uh-huh. the white man them are out there with us because <laughs> it's our generation, as far as that's concerned. And at the end of the day, we're still doing what we're doing on the estate. And, you know, your mom knows my mom. They might be Irish. Uh-huh. And then, you know, that, that's all a different thing. Again, the Irish, it was no blacks, no Irish, no dogs, or however they used to say it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Within England, we're talking about. Uh-huh. Um, so, so yeah, bro, growing up, to, to not to go off on a tangent, mm-hmm. um, there was a lot, of, a lot of tension, a lot of anger, a lot of... Yeah, confusion about mm. where where we're going, what's going to happen. A lot of rejection. Like I remember being sixteen, seventeen, uh-huh. um, not ne- leaving. I left. Well, I didn't. When I say I left school, I didn't even finish school. But um, I have no qualifications. So at the age of sixteen, seventeen, now um, I'm looking for a job, <laughs> even if it's just a factory job, uh-huh. bro. And I can't get it. I remember trying, I, I, like thinking back, I remember trying to get before, you know, I started to take crime seriously right. and went down the road of trying to be a, a, a career criminal. Mm-hmm. Um, I went through a stage of trying to get a job and trying to yeah. to do, in course, the right thing. You know what I'm saying? But um, the system is designed for us to fail. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, I realized that a long time ago still. Wow, I uh, tell you what, I want to come back later on in the in the uh, the interview to the riots and so forth, only because it it parallels what's going on today, um, Sir Ross. As you can see, everywhere around you with the rioting you know, and our people. So I want to come back to that later, but I want to go back now, uh, uh, picking up from where we started with you growing up in Brixton. Tell me about your parents, where, where, your mom, your dad. Where, where, you know, are they alive? Where, where are your parents are? Yeah, man. So I come. Well, right now, my parents are in the UK. Mm. They actually live in Jamaica, but they're here in the UK. And okay. the, the whole COVID thing, they got 
they got trapped here. Uh-huh. <laughs> the COVID nineteen thing, you know. My dad itching to get back to his to his farm and to his uh-huh. things in Jamaica. You get what I'm saying? Right. Um. So yeah, I grew up in a Christian home. Uh-huh. Um. You know, hardworking parents. My my father is a pastor. Mm. Or was a pastor because he doesn't pastor anymore. Still, he's up in age. Okay. Um, but he was very very active within the community. This is he Christianity. Yeah, this is Christianity, mm. um, the Pentecostal oh. version of Christianity, oh, okay. if I can say, you know, just traditional, that mm-hmm. time, you know, tambourine and liveliness and Holy <laughs> Spirit and that so, kind of vibe. So you grew up, um, you grew up um, on tam- that's, that, that's where, you, so you got your that's first taste bro. of music, um, so <laughs> from... Yeah, from your... <laughs> that's, where, that's where I learned music, bro. I learned music in church when I was about, from about the age of 11, um, I kind of taught myself how to play chords and on on the piano uh-huh. and then from about 11 to the age of about 13 i was actually playing the piano in church while the church people them are singing and all, all about ear. Yeah, i could I, all now i can't read more music <laughs> but um you know we just the father has instilled those gifts within us music uh-huh. is just something that is within us you mm-hmm. know and i go and grow here people sing and so i know all of these things kind of subliminally if that makes sense yes but um so yeah man i had a strong upbringing within the church very staunch strict um strict household um i'm the last child mm-hmm. of four biological children um you know so i was really the last hope <laughs> everybody else didn't make it everybody else kind of didn't live up to anybody's standards and then I was the last hope and I still didn't live up to the standards but praise God we live up we got the Holy Spirit but anyway <laughs> and, uh, um, this, 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 you, you, we, we need to go into this a bit I mean I need to speak um, ask you about your mother but obviously you're telling me about your father growing up you know in Christianity and so forth and um, but in them days how d- did you actually accept it then or was it just your your father was you know a christian he was a pastor no, i didn't i didn't i didn't i mean because of the way i grew up i always had had an awareness of god yeah and mm. an awareness of of christ um but i didn't understand i didn't understand how who who is Jesus in all of this? Mm. Um, what's the difference between God and Jesus? Yeah. And you know, um, is Jesus the only? Is, is why is Christianity and Jesus? Why is that the only way? Why you know you know the Muslims have their God, the Hindus have their gods or whatever. Um, isn't is everybody um, you know all kind of like praising the same God, mm-hmm. but just going through their different cultural cultural avenues yeah. was culturally really relevant for them that's that's kind of the the idea i had once i got a little bit older mm-hmm. once i was like in my teens sort of because all in my badness and all everything i was doing i still acknowledged that god was there uh-huh. do you know what i mean and yeah. and i would pray do you know what i mean mm-hmm. i would pray and all of these kind of things but um i wasn't I wasn't so sure on the exclusivity of the gospel uh-huh. um, at that time. If, if you know, you yes. understand what I mean. Definitely. Because I don't know your background, bro. I don't know mm. what you believe. I'm just, I'm just talking go ahead, man. You, you just go I'm ahead. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Growing up, I always had an awareness of God. I would always pray. Like even looking back, now, as a, I mean, as a child, you know, mm. bro, like seven, eight years old, I can remember praying in my room and 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 reading my bible uh-huh. and i had, I had, I had a children but like i've even found notes of when i was i might not have been as young as seven maybe i was about nine or ten or something right you take a notes of bible verse because i used to like close my eyes and open the bible and just point to us to a point and i open my eyes and read read the one or two verses you know what i'm saying that's how i used to approach the bible as a child uh-huh. um so I've always, and I've always been a deep thinker and then, you know, growing up and then, you know, just other influences and learning different things and I started to learn about, I, started to, I discovered David Icke maybe around the age of... David Icke? Yeah. Okay. Maybe mm-hmm. around the age of 17, 18. Right. And then um, the whole new world, new world Order thing and just all these different ways of looking at things uh-huh. and different explanations. Um, yeah, and I think I'm going off on, on a tangent again. But to, to, to go back, to, to reel it back to what you were saying, uh-huh. um, I've always 
had an awareness of God, but no, I did not accept the gospel um, from from a child. Okay. Um, you know, I believe that Jesus died in that, but I just didn't understand why it was so important. Right, right, um, right. Do you know what I mean? And, okay. and even then, I think, I think I didn't even believe it. I just, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it's just something that you hear and you just, okay, it just kind of goes over your head. Like, yes. there's no... There's no, there's no magnitude to it. I think it was just like that because I didn't understand it and I didn't, yeah, I don't, do you know what I mean? Just yes, like probably sir. someone, uh-huh. a, 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 a layman outside will probably have the same thing. Oh, yeah, he said that Jesus died. Do you believe it? Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Have you really thought about that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? You couldn't um, quantify, kind of you couldn't quantify the, um, the understanding basically that you were uh, exposed to at the time. Um, right. And I think it's the same for, for, for a lot of people anyway. Right, mm. but okay. So that's your dad. Talk to me about your mom in brief. Let the listening audience get a feel for what your mom is like. Yeah, man. So my mom is a strong black woman, man. You know, from you know, I'm I'm, I'm old school, man. So I remember growing up, and we never had washing machines. You know, <laughs> so I remember seeing my mom bending over the bath, making the washing sing. You know, what I'm saying cooking right. three meals a day. Mm. You know, like I said, my dad used to be involved in the community thing, and my mom was right behind her husband. Mm-hmm. So my front room growing up was like a like an office. My dad would be dictating, um, like talking, and my mom would be typing to what he's dictating on the on the typewriter. You know, what I'm saying because there's no computer those days, bro. So it's <laughs> typewriter, it's file machine, it's you know, it's all of that. So my house was like an office because, like I said, my dad would be running um, evening classes for for the youth in the community, right. um, supplementary education for the youth, predominantly for the black youth, but, you know, they wasn't rejecting white youth, um, you know, to help them with their studies um, and then the church stuff going on. And then, um, yeah, so my house was like an office growing up. <laughs> so my mom was that side, plus she was, you know, like I said, the, the, the cook, the cleaner, the carer, um, yeah, she, 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 she was a hard worker as well, had an office job, mm. strong in the church, you know what I'm saying? Strong singing voice, loves to sing and worship the Lord, um, a praying woman, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Just a just a strong black woman, bro. Um, yeah, man, and that's, that's, that's my mom, you know so, what I mean? So with that um, sort of disciplined upbringing, you must have been um, a, a, a A-star student in school. What, what were you like in school, um, Saras? No, I wasn't, you know, <laughs> still, you know. So I'm dyslexic, yeah? Yeah. So I think growing up and failing academically, mm. um, I think it was a big disappointment for my parents, to be honest. Like, I'm, like I, I, I hinted to you earlier, um, you know, like the pressure was on me still. Mm. Like I've got a big brother who, yeah, he, I mean, you know, I'm not going to trash him still, but, you know, <laughs> none of us are good, put it that way, only yeah. God is good. Um, and none of us have, have like, no one's been to university and got degrees and got great careers. And, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. None of us have that. Um, if anything, I'm the only one that is kind of, you know, I mean, I'm married, I've got a few kids and I'm holding down a job. Uh-huh. I mean, and, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but... um. Bro, what was the question again? Sorry. Yeah, about uh, how, how were you in school? I mean, yeah, how was I in school? Yes, I was yes. Dyslexic, yeah, and academically, I wasn't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do well. I mm. was good socially. Um, you know, I was. I was. Yeah, I was cool to socialize with other kids, and you know, the Joker, and you know, um, you would always hear me mm. in school. Like, I used to go around singing like Bounty Killer and Beanie Man songs <laughs> in my school and Budja Band and then I'd be like, Good God of my son in the corridor. You know? Everybody knows. So everybody knows for us. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, I was, yes. I was definitely um, an extrovert where that's concerned. Mm. But academically, mm. um, I, like, I have no GCSEs and even I think, I think part of the reason why I started to act up at a certain age is you know, embarrassment and pride. Oh, okay. So, like, I'm not getting certain things. Because, like, sh- like, I used to really like English. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Um, but then when they introduce things like Shakespeare and stuff like that, bro, like, I just turn off. <laughs> like, I think after after year eight and stuff, I just turn off because I couldn't get with the whole Shakespeare stuff. And, mm. 
And then, yeah, there's just certain things where I don't know, maybe how my mind is wired, it's not wired in the I mean, now we understand that, you know, we everybody learns in different ways. We've got visual learners, we've got learners who who learn by reading and you know what I'm saying? Oh. But back then it wasn't so recognized. Right. And it's sort of just one way and if you're not getting it, you're not getting it. Mm-hmm. And then you don't want to talk and say you don't, you're not getting it because you don't want to feel stupid and you don't want to look stupid in front of people. Uh-huh. So then I guess you just start being bad. You know what so, I'm saying? Because it takes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> takes the attention off of certain other things, I guess. Yes. So did you know from a young age then that you wanted to uh, go on into music? Um, no, or did it just, did it just happen, or, you know, would, organically? Yeah. So I've always been, I've always been kind of a show off, um, and always liked music and movies. And when I was little, I really used to like the Muppet Show and Sesame Street, and I used to like puppets and like songs and all the music that was 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 in. Now that's how I learned a lot of songs. That, I see. Because remember, I grew up in a strict household, so I learned a lot of songs that maybe uh, I don't know someone normally would just would have heard that in their house. I learned that through things like The Muppet Show, uh-huh. through, through them singing <laughs> their songs. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They're really singing songs in with the puppets. So, um, so yeah, I, I had a, a, a love for entertain, entertaining, whatever it be, music, acting. I used to have my own puppet show. Uh-huh. I used to have, I used to do dance. I had a band, I had, like, fam, like, <laughs> uh, so... I wouldn't say I always knew I wanted to be a singer or a rapper, but I always, I mean, mm-hmm. I remember at the age of 11 or 12, I wanted to be a film director. Okay. Like, I, I was looking up to people like Steven Spielberg and like, do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, um, so yeah, I don't know if I could say music, but I always, I've always been, yeah, I've always liked being the center of attention. I've always been creative. I've always been creating things and right stories and drawing pictures and, and just yeah so I um so i was always gonna do something like that uh, you you are well known um in the secular music world as uh, back in the day as a gangster rapper from your early beginnings with um pdc pre-days change which i'm gonna ask you to clarify what does pdc stand for because it it, it has quite a few um abbreviations so if you can clarify the correct one for me but um you are well known in that secular music world from your days with pdc what does that stand for by the way yeah so initially it was pure them crew right but um then it took on took on other other meanings and you know other people would create yeah new meanings and uh-huh. so yeah so there's something i'm not gonna say but so yes. build them crew pray days change uh-huh. poverty driven mm-hmm. children um four days are corrupted you know there's a few rude ones as well mm-hmm. but um yeah so well, originally it was Pill Them Crew. Pill Them Crew, okay. And and what was that like in the early days with uh, PDC? Mm. Is it was it just purely music? What was going on um, during them times? And how did no, you get involved was, basically with PDC? It was it was it was Mandem, so it was just like a bunch of friends from like the ends. Mm-hmm. Um, how did I get involved? It's man them in my community, basically. Uh-huh. You know, um, I got involved through through the music thing. Um, when PDC came together more closely, um, and things like Channel U was was popping off, and um, you know the DVDs. There was a lot of DVDs being made, independent DVDs, and um, you know people saw that this UK thing something can happen as far as the music and you know you can actually start making money and take a, like you know <laughs> cause 20 years ago there was no UK rappers Stormzy's of, of today and all of that uh-huh. um, you know they've got us to thank for what they're reaping now you set the foundation set the pace for all of that mm-hmm. right so um, so that's how we basically came together just a bunch of different men them who like we don't all come from the same area some men come from Angel Town some men come from my some man come from left, bro. But it's all Brixton. It's all like different little parts of Brixton. And, you know, man might know each other from little all dayers, under 80s all dayers, or know each other from growing up playing football or, or even from places like church. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and then, yeah, you know, came together and, and started to do music, started.
started to go studio together, started to take things seriously, like get offices and computers and, you know, just started to, yeah. But, um, and there was other stuff going on, obviously, right. because nobody had jobs. It was uh-huh. all real guys from the streets. Some man came straight out of jail and back onto the roads, onto this music thing. Uh-huh. That's what, that's the climate that was going on. Even me, when I was sort of the height of my infamy, I was I was on bail for about 15 months uh-huh. when I was really going hard. And by the time I got to jail, everybody knew me, like from DVDs being circulated in, in the prison. It uh-huh. was quite bizarre, you know what I'm saying? And and then I came out and same thing, came out and this, so, um, so yeah, you know, uh-huh. but it wasn't organized as far as, like we could say, organized crime funding a uh-huh. record label. Uh-huh. It wasn't nothing like that, it was, you know, real street guys from the streets who was all doing their individual stuff to get by. Right. Um, and, you know, but had this dream of being a rapper or mm-hmm. being an artist or whatever. And PDC had the wave. And PDC is the man them from Brixton who, you know, we was real bad boys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the man them involved we were real bad boys in their own right. Um, and it was just coming together to do this music thing. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's basically how that happened. Right. So you, from your days um, in the early, the, when the secular but music... Before PDC, yeah, I yes. used to do ragga. I used to do, you used to do ragga. dancehall music. Uh-huh. Yeah, before the peak, because before I used to rap, I, I was a dancehall artist called Black Rhino. Black Rhino, uh-huh. Yeah, and this was before Vibes Cartel made an artist called Black Rhino in Jamaica and put more Empire and all of that. And me are the original Black Rhino. <laughs> you see me? Right. Yeah, man, Tender Fly, Top Cat, any big, any art, any big artist, dancehall artist in England about Black Rhino. Uh-huh. Yeah, man, they all used to be around us. We had a studio in Angel Town, Daddy you know, the Yush record labels. Um, yeah, man, I had a Fright Night, Fright Night crew was my crew. Them time they scared them crews popping and shocking vibes crew and monster shock and uh-huh. you know. So in England we had this thing and then yeah and that was good but um I felt like the transition to rap was just yeah, it it was inevitable because even my my my, my dance hall songs was changing. It was they was morphing into just a different kind of sound. It wasn't dance hall, it wasn't rap, it was just Sorose. You know what I'm saying? And that's mm. when the name started to come into changing as well. Like, yeah. So, um, uh-huh. yeah, sorry, bro. I just thought I'd throw that out there for you. That's, <laughs> a, that's all right. I love that. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, you're in the secular music scene, right, at that point. Mm. Mm-hmm. When I look at your journey, you had influence. Is You know, mm. you, you, you had, um, you were known and so forth. But... Yeah. What what happened? Why did you you know what propelled you to to leave um, that that scene? Um, well, I became a, <laughs> I became a follower of the Messiah. I tell her what, tell her, tell her what. Jesus. Before we go on to the um, your change, mm. I want to ask you something. Go back mm. to the, them days and so forth, and versus like a lot of the music that we see today with the you know the, the drill music and so on. Can you shed mm. some light on what do you think of the drill music scene, and is it is it a positive uh, something positive for the youths to gravitate to, or do you do you see it as a negative? Mm. Well, I'm gonna be a little bit biased now, and um, <laughs> you know maybe maybe I'm showing my age, yeah, but um. The, the 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 stereotypical drill is it a positive thing? No, it's definitely not a positive thing. And maybe that's what I did used to do the same thing. I used to because basically what drill is is man them are doing dirt on the roads and rapping about it. Uh-huh. That's basically what it is. Yeah, whether they're stabbing people or whether they're whatever they're doing. Um, now I used to do the same thing, but it wasn't that extreme. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, what I mean is, I was a drug dealer, and all I really used to do was rap about selling drugs. Uh-huh. If, if you get what I mean. Yes. Um, but these guys now have taken it a step further, and are killing people, and then snitching on themselves on a draw record. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> now that's not quite uh, um, intelligent. <laughs> it's not intelligent, bro. Even what I was doing wasn't intelligent, mm. basically. But it's 
it's you know, and I'm not saying what I was doing is is better than what they are. Right. I'm I'm, I'm just saying like it is a different level when you kill someone and then you you rap about it and you're you're not even like everyone knows what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Um, do you know what I mean? So so to the fact where the police can um play your record in court and incriminate you with your own record because you're saying you're snitching on yourself on the yes. record basically. So um but you know at the end of the day bro it's 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 music and it is is an expression. Right. Now now you know, who are we going to blame? Are we going to blame the artist for making the song or are we going to look at ourselves and say, why do we like this so much? Uh-huh. True. Because if no one liked those kind of songs, they wouldn't get made. True. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So there's clearly an audience that likes this stuff. And then subliminally or uh, not, like those of us who listen, who share, who whatever, we're supporting it. Right. Do you get what I mean? Like so, like like one time when the stabbing and all of that was 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 at its peak. I don't know, maybe about six months ago. When and the whole um, my brothers Jedi and them, you know Jedi, Raspic, those guys, they got a movement called Gang Unite. Right. Um. Yeah, called Guiding Gang stands for um Guiding the Next Generation, and what they they're trying to do in the streets is get. The, the, the rival gang members to to squash their beef and to unite. That's what they're trying to do within the community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I saw somebody, not not none of those guys, but I saw somebody who was kind of supporting that movement. But they make nothing but murder music. <laughs> you get me? Yes. So I just thought that's so hypocritical. And then I posted something saying basically like, um, we can't talk about uniting the youth them and violent for peace when we promote violent songs violent films violent video get like do you know what i mean right like we're telling the youth them to stop killing each other but we're glorifying the gangsterdom but so like you can't have your cake and eat it yeah. the same goes in this country yes. do you know what i mean bro yes. so um you know i respect the artistry and what some of the drill because some drills rubbish fam. Right? Oh. I'm like, oh, this is whack. But some of it is actually good. At first, I thought it was all rubbish. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Um, I thought it was all just them killing, talking about killing each other and not even being, like, there's no, there's no expertise to the flow and there's no, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, like, when you listen to a good rapper, like, I don't know, like a Nas or, or back in the day, a Drake or, yes. I don't know, when someone is just flowing, you know, like, yo, my <laughs> man got skills. Oh. Like, yeah, I, I didn't really hear that in the drill thing until... I started listening a little bit closer and I can see there there is some artistry to it. Uh-huh. Um, but is it, is, is it positive? No. Can there be positive drill? Yes. Uh-huh. Because there's gospel drill out there that it don't sound cheesy. It actually sounds sick. Instead of them talking about killing like a rival, mm-hmm. a rival gang member, they're talking about killing demons. So it still sounds it's still got that I see. that viciousness to it, if you if you like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. But um, but so, yeah, the mainstream drill was going, and I don't approve of it, and I think mm-hmm. it's quite toxic to, to to what's going on with the youth. Then, you know? so 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 Rose, with, with um with the height of fame that you reach um at your t- when you uh, were doing secular music, with certain collaborations with uh. Uh, what's his name? French Montana and so forth. And how, how did you how did you escape or deal with the allure of you know that level of fame? And um, how did you avoid? You hear people speak of you know selling their souls and and all of that. How did you um, deal with that? Yeah. So when I when I when I got my feet wet, as as we could say, um, you know, being in the states and going back and forth and. You know, living a certain lifestyle, meeting certain people, um, I started to not like it. You get me, right? And then, and then it was like um, I was wrestling with my feelings, like why, why am I not enjoying this? Why am I not liking this? <laughs> you know, huh. like I'm, I'm all the way in, for instance, California. You know, I've got all these things going on for me. Like, why do I feel like this kind of thing? Um, so um, yeah, I guess it was just seeing, seeing, seeing the realness of people. 
Um, like for instance, I've got to meet a lot of my favorite artists. I've got to work with some of my favorite artists. Uh-huh. Yeah, and um, sometimes like I was telling someone the other day, um, sometimes it's not like yeah. If you look up to someone, sometimes it's not always a good idea to meet them and to want to hang out. With them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yes. I met some 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 people who I really used to, and I highlight used to, yeah, respect their music, fam, uh-huh. yeah, and then I meet them and they turn out to be total jerks. <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? Yes. And then you just think like, oh, fam, like, I'm I'm kind of mad I even met you or got to be around you and stuff. Cause now I don't even like you, so now I can't even listen to your music no more. <laughs> like, you know, like that. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of different different and I, I you know we're on radio I'm not going to go too deep and mm. you know blow nobody up and all of that yes, yes. But, um, but yeah I saw enough to know that the music industry is not real um, you know I can, I, I can only say the music industry because um, that's the industry I, I I had you know privy privy access to in that respect uh-huh. um, it's not real um, you know everybody's fake um, you know, when your name's calling and when you're hot, you're hot. You know, when when nothing now go on for you is, you really feel lonely. Uh-huh. Um, and you know, you see stories. I mean, you hear stories and uh, you see people do things, and you wonder why people do things. Um, and it's out of desperation because you know, if you buy into if you buy into certain things, um, if 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 yeah, if you let them value you, yeah. And you're not living up to that expectation, or, or like you're not Mr. Mention no more, or something like that. Yes. You can you can really like <laughs> you can really have a hard time for it. Fam. That's <laughs> why people do crazy things, man. Yes. Like like I don't know, I'm a celebrity, get me out of it, or something like. That. You see people <laughs> go on those programs when their career is over. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And stuff like that. People do crazier things like kill themselves. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was never in that any kind of situation because I never reached that height of fame. But, um, you know, yeah, mm. man, people talk about selling your soul and yes. all of that. And, you know, what is selling your soul and rare, rare. And, but I believe it's just doing any and anything to get mm. to where you want to go to. Right. And that's what I was not prepared to do. You weren't prepared you know to do saying? that, yes. I wasn't prepared to do that, bro. Um, but that is the mentality. They t- they tell you, like, you know, if you want it, you really want it, you got to show how much you want it kind of thing. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? The whole Me Too thing with, you know, girls getting, get, um, you know, Harvey Weinstein and all of that, having um, raping women and that to give them parts in in, in, um, in movies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Bro, that's, that's entertainment culture. Yes. It's just that it's, it's blown up now. But it's always been that way. You know what I'm saying? You uh-huh. grant a sexual favor to a producer or to a rapper as a female or whatever. Um, or even in some cases as a male, bro, it's all crazy out there. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yes. But sexual favors, orgies, um, weird rituals, just weird stuff, bro. <laughs> all goes on in the industry, bro. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's, it's all hush hush, a lot of drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. hard drugs, um, bro. Just a lot of stuff that. Well, on you, you know, since you're on the just, subject uh, uh, of um, of the drugs, you speak quite um, open and candid. You know, of your ex uh, drug dealing uh, background. Tell me, what yeah, you, well, how, did, how did that come into that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what what kind of drugs was it though? What what, what were you into? T- talk to us about that. Did you go to prison? Yes, yeah, so I used to sell heroin and crack cocaine. Right. That's what I used to sell. And I used to go out of town, out of London to do it. Uh-huh. Um, and, and yeah, you know, I don't want to go too deep into yes. the operation. Yes. But that's, that's you know, yes. yeah, that's, that, that's what I would, that was my thing. Right, right. You know, and I always sold a little bit of weed on the side. But um, uh-huh. my, my, main, my main thing was crack cocaine and heroin. Uh-huh. I see. Yeah. And, and so what advice would you have for some of these youths who are drawn um, to that lifestyle today with the music and the drugs and so on? Yeah, it's not, it's, again, it's not real, man. It's mm. a facade. <laughs> you know, it might be nice for a season. Some people have longer seasons than others. Yes. But um, it does all come tumbling down, man, in one way or another. If it's not you getting arrested or going to prison or, or being killed, then it's 
it's other stuff happening. Like I don't know, your girl or your your man them turning on you and betraying you and setting you up to get robbed and or just other stuff, bro. Mm. Like within that lifestyle, like you know, you saw what you read. The Bible says, and if you're not a believer in the Bible and you know you believe in things like you know the energy you put out there, mm-hmm. if you want to say stuff like that. The energy you put out there, bro, is the energy you're going to get back from. Yes. You know, like heroin and crack cocaine kill people. Like, I've seen people die in front of me, bro. Like, I've seen people nearly die in front of me and get slapped up and wake up. Like, I've seen all of this stuff because of drugs, bro. Oh, like, do you get what I mean? And we can sit down and try and make ourselves feel good and say stuff like, um, well, um, you know, I'm not forcing anybody to buy my drugs. If they don't come and buy my drugs, they're going to get the drugs from somewhere else. Oh. Mm-hmm. Which is true. Yes. But why should it be you? Do you know what I mean? What Do you want that person's blood on your hands? Like, fair enough. You're not forcing them to sell it, but you're still giving it to them knowing that it could kill them. Mm-hmm. Like, they could kill themselves like, accidentally or maybe even intentionally. Or maybe someone will kill them for it. <laughs> like, and the whole <laughs> thing is yeah and and you know i deluded my like family i have family members who are addicted to drugs bro yes you get what i'm saying like and i um deluded myself for many years bro like like, i went to prison i sold drugs while i was in prison like i came out and sold drugs you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. it's a mentality that like it's only the gospel that may i only i i only don't sell drugs now right now because I believe in the teachings of Yeshua HaMashiach, bro. Yes. That's the only... Yes. I'll be real with you. That's the only... <laughs> not because... That's what's keeping you. <laughs> um, my morals have changed. Uh-huh. Not because of that. Don't yes. get me wrong. Because of the gospel now, I understand that drugs is wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, um, selling drugs is wrong and, 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 what it, and there's no justification for it. I understand that now. But what I'm saying is if it wasn't... The gospel makes me understand that. Uh-huh. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> like, like, bro, I know big men, 50s in their 60s, who still dabble around in selling hard drugs, bro. Yes. Because the nick, I don't know if it's the nick of the woods we come from. I don't know if it's the way we are. I don't know if it's just because you're a hustler, you're a hustler, and you have that kind of um, that 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 drive in you. I don't know, bro, what it is. Uh-huh. But um, I know if it wasn't for the gospel, fam. Like, I'd still be involved in stuff like well, that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, um, mm-hmm. and, and, yeah. Listen. Life's grim if the preachers have forgot the king. Wow. Allowing heresy just to bring the people in. So in church, are you really learning anything? Believers don't know how to recognize the man of sin. It's pretty dark if you never heard about the wrath. The bad things that are gonna have to come to pass. Bombs blast on the homes of believers. Martyred for Christ, he could die in the sea. They think it's happy clappy singing about the love of Jesus But would you die for what you believe in? If it's needed, if he say so Cause he already died and rose to the textbook Apostle Pablo told us to prophesy He read Diablo's message in his book of lies I know they say you shouldn't criticize the pastor But what happened if they lead us to disaster? I send a prayer up, commit it to the Father the truth is written in the book, we have the answer. He said that many fools, prophets gonna claim the sun. But never worry, keep the faith and know he's gonna cut. Meanwhile, the church is under persecution. Believers dying every day of execution. Outlawed for the faith, no illusion. War and pollution, the beast, the solution. One law for the world, one government. One fool's God, one fool's covenant. So where is their retribution? Back to the book for conclusion Said he's coming back to burn all delusions Yeshua God is not a God of confusion He doesn't care about celebrity Fools, prophets wanna preach prosperity Name and claim your place in the lake of fire Evil men preach and teaching on their own desire He's a liar, he denied the Messiah Hosanna in the highest hell, the conquering liar I'm singing praises and I feel inspired Knowing one day I will see him outside King Yeshua in his glory I'm in love with every story Yeah, well, um, I told the listening audience that um, Soros' life is one of positive change. 
And um, this next conversation we're about to have is about this change that he's just mentioning, his change to the understanding of the Messiah. And so, Sir Rose, I want to start with that, this change that uh, you are speaking of. You, uh, in your music, you speak, you sing about um, Israel. Um, your album, which we're going to discuss in the final uh, segment, Truth and Culture album, you, the, the lyrical content of that um, bears testimony of this um, particular change. So talk to us about this change, Sorosian. What, you know, when did you first start, you know, when did this first change occur? Mm, around um, 2015, you know. Mm. Around, yeah, t towards the end of 2014. And then, yeah, yeah, around 2015 was when I was sure, mm -hmm. yeah. And what happened? Did you go to bed and have a dream and what, what happened? No, not really, you know. So it was, um, so when I first started asking deeper questions and started to, um, started to really, really ask what was going on was I was actually right so because of my criminal record going back and forth to America I was always going on a tourist visa which only gives you three months okay so there was a season where I was going from um, America to my parents in Jamaica just because it's closer to go to Jamaica and come back to England uh -huh. do you know what I mean yes with the intent of, so I would go to Jamaica for a couple of months and then go back to America and then bam, I get another three months on my visa, yeah? Uh -huh. um, by the time I was recording that album in America. Um, so it was during that period while I was in Jamaica um, in 2014. And it was around the same time that um, ISIS, the Islamic State, was was big on the news and they were chopping off the man's heads on the beach and uh -huh. all of this type of stuff was going on. And um, at the time, on the social media, there was a lot of memes and things, um, scripture from Revelation and stuff like that. So it was just a big... So I, I, at the time, I was looking more into Islam. It was just a big melting pot of debate and, and thoughts going on in my mind at the time around the world. Do you get what I mean? Uh -huh. um, Obama, just all this stuff that was going on. Um, and so what initially made me ask questions was, what's the beef with, with Christianity and Islam? Mm -hmm. What is the whole beef? Um, so I was looking into that, um, looked into the Bible where I saw certain things that I thought was just incredible. We ain't really got the time to go into yes. it, but concerning, concerning um, the Middle East, and and just the his, more more so history of Islam in contrast to to, to the Bible and to the scriptures, um, and then at, during that time as well with my whole music and back and forth to America and and the album and stuff, I was getting agitated like I don't want to do it anymore. Like, yes. like I was saying to you, it was it was all going on, all these thoughts was happening around the same kind of time. Uh -huh. Do you get me? Um, so anyway, long story short, I left Jamaica, I went back to LA, um, and yeah, the last six weeks I had in LA, I just knew that this was going to be the last time I'll be doing this in this kind of setting, in this kind of way. I knew that yeah. my journey, for whatever I was, wherever I thought I was going, yes. my journey had stopped. And this is a big thing for me, bro, mm -hmm. because because maybe you're from, from about the age of 18, um, and bear in mind, then I was from 18 to about 34 years old. All I ever wanted to do was be the, the, the best rapper from England. Oh, I see. And rap with the, the, the biggest rappers and just do, do this thing. You get me? I oh. always felt like I've had a calling of leadership to to give people a message. I've always, always felt like that, bro. Uh -huh. Yeah? Um, I just didn't know what it was. I know now what it is. But at the time, I didn't know. That's why you're here. So, I mean, I don't know if you've heard my old, my old hip hop music. But um, there was a time I went through. I was I was very hard on like conspiracy theories and the mm. new world order and shape shifters. And <laughs> I was hard on it, bro. Yes. And I was like, people used to love me for it. I was like a cult <laughs> following because of that. You get me? Yes. But um, yeah, I never really understood what the calling was up mm. until you know. I came to Christ and, and, you know, I see it through that lens. But, um, so 
So yeah, then I came to England in 2015 and I just went hard with the studying. Mm -hmm. You get me? Um, I, I, I was confident that Islam was false. You get me? Based mm -hmm. on Islamic doctrine. I, I was confident that that was false. You get me? So um, then I, I looked into the relationship between Judaism and Christianity and what's, so what's the difference then? And, um, you know, then I, I learned those those things and then I understand, okay, so this, how they're doing it is wrong. That's that's the wrong way kind of thing. They've got the scriptures wrong. And so, you know, but it was a process of elimination. Mm -hmm. Some things are easier than others. Like, I, I always knew Selassie was never God. I always knew, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That yes. The emperor, even though I, I love and respect the emperor, because as my, but I really love and respect him as my Christian brother, uh -huh. because Selassie was a Christian. You get me? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so, um, so that's the love and respect I have for him. Uh -huh. but, um, but yeah, so I knew he wasn't, I always knew he wasn't God. So that was, so what I'm trying to say is some things was easier than others. I see. Um, mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Yes. Um, Hinduism, I knew that, that, I don't, I mean, I can look into it to see what they believe and, you know, because all things are useful for when you're sharing ideas and sharing the gospel and things like that. Um, if you can use examples mm. and illustrations that someone else can relate to. Yes. So it was good to know things, but um, I didn't need to, to look too deep into it. There was, like, Islam, I had to look deep into it, bro, because they say, because a Muslim will come and say to you, oh, but, you know, you believe in one God, we believe in one God, you love Jesus, we love Jesus, you believe Jesus is coming back, we believe, like, they will get you like that, same way, Maybe a Mormon or a Jehovah Witness might get. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Things like that. I eliminated those things easily. Jehovah's Witness. I need some certain things was as easy for yes. me to eliminate them based on some of their doctrines or or even their founders, the people who founded so, their, their movement. <laughs> so obviously, the Bible, uh, the truth of the Bible, so, for that matter, right. spoke a chord with you. It did. I was I was left of the gospel when I was confident that the holy scriptures then i had to look at you know the council of bro i did a lot of studying i'm not <laughs> yes. talking about do you know what i mean yes like because yes. if i'm gonna i'm someone who's a, a passionate person yeah so if i'm gonna put my name to something and more importantly i'm gonna put my life on something yeah i'm gonna be a hundred percent sure that this thing is real fam and it ain't you know what I mean? It ain't, it ain't someone feeding me a story hoodwinking me. Uh -huh. I gotta be, like, you know, the Bible says, let each man be sure of in his own mind. Yes, you get yes, me? Yes. So I needed, I needed to be sure, fam, that the scriptures was real. So I went through the, you know, the Hulk. Now, I basically went on a quest to prove that the Bible is fake. <laughs> How about that? I hear you. That's yes. the quest I went on. Uh -huh. Yeah? And bro, I just kept getting slapped in my face with more evidence of these things and that things. And it was just so overwhelming, the evidence, just the evidence of the authenticity of mm -hmm. the Bible. And then why other, why certain books aren't in the Bible? Like, right. you know, maybe the book of Enoch or, or the book of Thomas or the Gospel of Mary, because these things are out there. Um, and the reasons why they're not in there, mm -hmm. um, you know, all, just so much data yes. and evidence that so, I processed. So let me ask you this. Understand. Now, this <laughs> is true. This is, this is real. This yes. is actually, this stuff happened. You get me? Yes. Yeah, man, I know I'm Messiah, I'm a you know? Yeah, sure, I'm a Shia, you know? Yeah, man, I said the message, don't go on out to the nations. So I just will respond to the message, you know? Who over ear to ear? But we're not forced people. We just have put it out there, you know? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Spirit be my guide, the Father and the Son. Daily Elohim, the God of Solomon. And prayer will be done from now till kingdom come. Another day upon the corner, the thugs are reason and abound the marijuana. The youth are stop them one another like a drama. I send for one another in a balaclava. Police are hustle and tackle with no answer. The politician, them and judges, them a gangster. Seems the wicked getting richer like the banker. When the poor in the ghetto die from cancer. But we are go to our say now. Trust the judge, I lead the way out. 
Now we have to watch and pray. Hey. Messiah coming any day. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. Spirit be my guide, the Father and the Son. Daily Elohim, the God of Solomon. And prayer will be done from now till kingdom come. I saw we tried in the Gideon Them want to tell me he's a white man religion And them don't know the eunuch nor the Libyan <laughs> And them no blacker than Simeon Me find me culture in me sire, you know me skin tone Me study history but the future matters more so Let us love and let us live and let us all grow Humble the power of the gospel What we are going to do us, hey, hey Just say that I lead the way, hey now we have to watch and pray. Messiah coming any day. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. Spirit be my guide, the Father and the Son. Daily Elohim, the God of Solomon. And prayer will be done from now till kingdom come. Yeah! Another day upon the corner The thugs are reason and I burn the marijuana The youth are stop them when I need a like a drama I send for one and a in a balacaba Police are hustle and attack with no answer The politician, them and judges, them a gangster Seems the wicked getting richer like the banker While the poor in the ghetto die from cancer Yo, yo, what we are going to do, what say now? Trust that judge will lead the way, yo. Now we have to watch and pray. Messiah coming any day. Hero Israel, the Lord our God. Yeah! Let me ask you this. I mean, you, you as a Jamaican, as a black man, you sing of Israel. You sing of Israel. You sing of the Messiah. Many would hear that and, and um, immediately parallel that too. Israel in the Middle East. Is that what you're talking? No, I'm not talking that. I'm talking Israel, meaning the family of God, meaning some people would call it a spiritual Israel. Mm. Um, you know, if you want to call it that, I don't mind calling it that. But, um, you know, my understanding of the scripture tells me that once you accept the Messiah and you're following the teachings of the Messiah, you're a child of God. And, you know, Israel is, is, is God's nation. Israel, oh, huh. you know, we're engrafted into you. the, God told Abraham that he will make him a great nation. You know, the I nation of Israel yes. started with, with Abraham, who they say is the father of the faith, you know. I so, hear. um, so that's, that's, that's how I am. And I'm saying, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, as you know, as the psalm says. Um, so yeah. Right. So that's, so t t what, what about your, your friends and family that you had in brief? Um, what did they think of, of this change? Yeah, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are very, very welcoming and very, you know, sort of, you know, congratulating. Oh, bro, I'm so happy for you. you found your truth and right. that kind of stuff. And, you know, yeah, I found my truth, but it's your truth too, bro. <laughs> you know, that's what I normally hit people back with. It's your yes. truth. I mean, it's just for me, you know. Yes. Like, like, you know, but, you know, it's not in my power of persuasion. Mm. <laughs> so, um, so yes. people were generally very happy for me still. And some um, must, have give you know. you, must have given you pushback as well. Yeah, man. You're mm. done when you get pushed back. You're done when you get the white man religion. Yes, and yes, fam, yes. And don't make them get you in. Fam, I used to go to church yes. for five years and then fam, and, you know, and Jesus ain't even real and it's not even true. And like, but fam, those things help me. Uh -huh. You get me? Because, like, I, then, for, like, 1 Peter 3.15 says, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have within you, fam. Uh -huh. So when I hear things or I read memes and that, that prompts me to go and study yes, so yes. that I can answer these questions because I don't want to be the kind of person like when I was growing up, I would ask a, maybe, you know, a pastor or someone like that a question. And some of the questions too big for the pastor, instead of them saying they don't know, they're going to tell you like, you need the Holy Spirit to, to mm. understand that or, or, or don't question God or, 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just start, start a mad. Just say you don't know, yes. man. You get me? So I don't want to be that type of person. I want to mm. be the person that I can provide you with an answer. You don't have to accept my answer. But at least I can give you something for you to take away and go and chew on, slap it up and down, throw it up and down, and decide whether you like it or not. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I at least want to give you something to go away with. Yes. Um, and, well, yes. So, yeah. I mean... Uh, listening audience, Sorose has, you know, his album, the debut album, which I love very much, is uh, entitled The Truth and Culture Album, uh, Culture with a K. It's a debut seven-track um, reggae album, all right? And um, on it, he sings of uh, certain songs such as, G- uh, what's this? G- Jesus, I guess you would say, Yeshua is my savior with Sorose and, and Rebla, where the certain lyrics such as, hail up the creator, never bow for the paper, you know? So so it's, uh, it's another one and it's Sarosa. Uh, this is the last days where you sing of the, the earth cries overwhelmed with the evil. That you sing another one, the tribulation, the great tribulation. Uh, Hero Israel. You know, such songs, the mark of the beast. What in, you know, I, I can see where all of this inspiration comes from based on um, this change. How long, how long did this album take to put together? Um... The Truth and Culture album. Mm. How long did that take me? No, not too long, you know, bro. Right. Not too. I'm yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty quick with songwriting and all that kind of stuff. I'm yeah. I just you know, it's just a natural thing, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I see. That, yeah, some people find it hard, but as long as um, I like the music, the, mm. the instrumental, the rhythm. As long as I've got that, I don't know, man. God just does something in my mind, and I just the creative juices in my brain start flowing, and you know. So maybe yes. I don't know. Maybe about maybe about three months. I'm like that. Yes, I love. I yeah, really man. love the uh, the what the track that is entitled "Hero Israel" and you, uh, "Spirit Be My Guide" and so forth. You know, it's really yeah, man, that's you know, a lot the of message. people's favorite. People <laughs> love that one. There, still for real. Yes, yes, yes. That's powerful. <laughs> Give Let, thanks, give thanks, right. Do you do um concerts and so on throughout the UK and, and the Caribbean? Yeah, so but before before COVID, I was doing one and two little shows and um here and there. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, because of the because, because of the the message, yeah. Um, the message the message is a conscious message message, but it goes deeper. And I'm, I'm saying Yeshua, I'm saying you know yes. Holy Spirit and Jesus and things like that so I don't get invited to certain like if those words I was saying was Selassie or Garvey or something else bro yes. I, yeah every reggae thing every little thing growing on <laughs> yes you'd, you'd be hearing my name ringing yeah but because I do emphasize Jesus and, and Yeshua mm. um, I don't get you know because you know, our people. A lot of our people are ignorant, so they don't. They don't want to associate themselves with Jesus or Yeshua. And you know what I'm saying? There's, that ignorance is still within our community, bro. Yes. People still don't understand. Like I said before, Salafi was a Christian man, but like people, people don't like. There's Rasta man walking on the streets now who don't know this. Uh-huh. They don't know Salafi is when they say defender of the faith. They're talking about defender of the Christian faith. Yeah. That's that's who this brother is. You know what I'm saying? This brother prayed to Jesus. So, um, and that's even why it's a part of the reason why I have locks now, bro. Because I'm trying to engage with my people. Uh-huh. Don't get me wrong. All people are my people because yes. I believe there's one race, the human race. Yeah? But, you know, and yeah, we, we can say things like, uh, Color don't matter. It don't matter what color Jesus was. It don't matter what color the, the Hebrews was of that time. I mean, it does because <laughs> yes. they made him white. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If if they didn't make him white, then it, it wouldn't matter. Yes. If it was left to all of everyone's imagination, I like see. um, you know what I mean? Because mm. they made him white, it, it it is a problem. We have to um address these things and 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 yeah, we have gotta take them. We got yeah, like properly. We can't like pussyfoot around with it uh-huh. we've got to deal with it you know what I'm saying bro um, and, and, and I'm, I'm some there's many people like who, who are dealing with the issue there's many videos on YouTube by respected people um, who are educated and eloquent 
and and they're explaining how Christianity cannot be the white man's religion. Yeah, it it it, it cannot be a Eurocentric thing. Uh-huh. Um, and getting deeper into it, there's 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 tons of information out there, but because our people again, you know, a lot of us don't research. Um, a lot of us are not going to watch a YouTube video, let alone brother, pick up a book. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it takes people like you and myself to be making radio programs, uh-huh. songs, going out on the streets, engaging with people, getting into conversation with people, not being scared to challenge someone's yes. view or, or belief because you don't want to offend them. Like, fam, the Bible's offensive. Like, it's going to offend mm, you. If yeah. the Bible don't offend you, you're not reading it right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, right, okay, is it the word of God? Yes. So let's, 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 how do we deal with this offense? <laughs> how do we, you know, and what can we learn from it? What can yes. we take from it? So, um, so yeah, bro, I'm all about engaging the Afro-Caribbean and African community in the truth of the scripture and the truth mm-hmm. of the gospel and trying to dismantle mm-hmm. myths, yes. traditions, and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, I, I can tell that you're quite um, contented and happy with um, the journey that you're currently on, whilst also yeah. appreciating all the uphill struggles that you've had to endure, right? And I, I think it's, um, it's, it's attributed to your music, the content of your music. And I, I think it's going to strike or it's going to uh, serve as a, as a great testimony to the younger generation. Yeah, you are on Mula Mula Cake Radio. Is that is that so? Yeah. So recently, I got a, <laughs> and it was all by accident, you know, bro. My friend got his own um clothing line, Mula Cake Mula Cake. Um, you know, they do tracksuit t shirts, yes, slippers, shoes, all kind of stuff. Um, entrepreneur in the community. So he's re- been going for seven years now. Before I used to do music with him. This is how we we go back like twenty years. So he, a lot of the music you're talking about, like uh-huh. back in the day, like he was with me doing a lot of that stuff. Yes. Um, Big Bag Blue, Dexter Sims. Um, he had a company, a music company, along with my, my brother called Car, um, called In The Streets Entertainment. Uh-huh. So, um, so we used to do a lot of stuff together back in the day. And then he called me about, maybe about three months ago and said, um, he's launching a radio station, um, can I, can he get some jingles for me from the radio, you know, like some drops? So I was like, yeah, man, cool, man. Tell me what you need. Um, and then something in my mind just said to, said to say, um, phone him back and tell him that he should have a gospel show on his station. Mm-hmm. You get me? Yes. So I did that. And then he was like, all right, cool. What are you saying? Um, next week, Sunday? Da, 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 da. I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what do you mean, bro? <laughs> like... Yes. All right, let me see if I can find a DJ first. I was just like, kind of like just in the water. You get me? My yes. man threw it right back at me, rude boy. So um, <laughs> I hollered at a few DJs who I know who, who are good and, you know, they're believers, they're good and they play good, like gospel, hip hop and, and, and all of that and reggae and all of that. And, um, and yeah, everyone was saying they was busy and they can't mm. do it. You know what I'm saying? So then I was like, oh, man. Like, right. this is such an opportunity, you get me? And then that's like, I'm not one of these people that say, you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, rare, rare. But, um, <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> I believe that God prompted me to say like, Ra, what are you doing? Right yes, boy? yes. You get me? And that's mm. the prompting I got. So I just acted off the prompting and I said, you know what, fam? Mm. I'll that's do really it, going. you get me? And then, <laughs> yeah, and then yes. since then, like, it's like, yeah, man, God's just sent me equipment. Wonderful. Like, bruv, I didn't know nothing about DJing or nothing in that. <laughs> like, now I've got a controller yeah. worth 300 pounds. I've got a mic. I've got, like, someone sponsored me to pay for my subscription to the virtual DJ thing. Uh-huh. Every, like, fam, like, God has just patterned things up for me. <laughs> and now I think I've done it for about five weeks now. Yes. I'm, I'm, I do what you do. <laughs> I, I play music more time. You yes, get me? yes. Um, yes. And now I'm, like, into the swing of it. Mm. Like, like, I'm getting, like, cool, like, 800, 900 listeners every week wow. kind of thing. It's mad, bro. Uh-huh. So, um... That's wonderful. So, yeah, so that's recently going on. And I'm just trying to shine a light to the good music that's out there. Because there's a lot of good yes. artists who are 
preaching the gospel in their message. And the music's sick, fam. Gospel drill, that's sick, like I was saying earlier. Gospel hip-hop, mm-hmm. you know, all kind of sounds. Gospel afro beats, re- just sick, fam. Yes. Um, but no one hears it. No one, even the Christians don't really know the music. Mm-hmm. There's so much music out there. And then the platforms, the mainstream, like, in court Christian platforms, I don't know, um, you know, Premier Gospel is one of the big ones, or Premier Radio, um, they're not really shining a light on it. You know what yeah. I mean? And then they've, I think they've got one kind of hip-hop show on, on that, that's every week. But even that, I mean, there's only so much you can, you know what I mean? And the DJ, I'm not sure if the DJ, I mean, I don't want to talk down anyone's thing, <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm saying there's a reason for this, and I think it's filling a gap that, uh, that people are not, people are not, um, yeah. Yes, and and yeah. finally, you know uh, I mean? yes, and finally, as we wrap up uh, this interview, uh, in brief, um, Sirose, I understand that you are also an author. You're you're currently writing a, a book. Is that is that correct? Yes, I'm a, I'm a children's author. You, know. you are a children's I've got, author. I've got a book out there. Yeah, tell I'm us, tell the tell us the, the name of the the book and where we can actually yeah, get man. this book. You know. Yeah, so if you go Amazon and you type "Learning is Fun with Ringo." Um, R-I-N-G-O, Ringo. Um, um, yeah, the book is there, man. It's a children's book. Ringo is a little character that I created for my daughter, yes. really, initially. Um, you know, he's a, a little boy who lives in Jamaica with his mom and dad and his grandparents. And, you know, his favorite, um, he loves fruit and veg and stuff. And his favorite fruit is avocado. And he loves drinking coconut water. And, you know, he loves singing songs and playing his guitar and, it's a book for toddlers, bro. Yes. Um, and then I, I've got a cartoon, um, a Ringo cartoon on YouTube. Um, yeah, the Ringo song, ABC, the ABC song. Um, okay. And that's out there. So, yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. Tell us uh, where right. you can find the book again. Can that's you say that again? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's called Learning is Fun with Ringo. Learning is Fun with Ringo. Right. Yes. Sounds like a, a yeah, very man. inspirational book, um, well put together. Um, well, yeah, man. <laughs> there you have it, um, Sir Rose. Uh, this completes our interview. It's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to you know have this conversation, my brother. Um, thank you for you know choosing to have this conversation with us on Truth Music Radio, and um, wish yeah, you all man. the best, my brother, in all your future endeavors. Peace and love, my brother. Yes. Well, there you have it again, um, listeners. Um, thank you for tuning in to the program Profiler with me, Jeremiah, your host. As you've heard, uh, the testimony of Sir Sarose, his journey uh, from his early days growing up in Brixton, uh, his days from the secular music scene and all the entrapment that came with that. You've also heard of the change uh, 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 coming into the knowledge of the Bible. And um, you You've heard of the album that he has out there. Please check that out. Truth and Culture album. All right. And um, support the brother. Support the work. Support the movement. This is positive. All right. So thank you all for joining in. Thank you all for joining with the program. Until next time, as we always say, stay positive. And until we next broadcast, walk good. Oh, 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 oh,